Wow, everybody survived last night, huh? That's good to know. Um, so yes, I am from PayPal. Uh, we were here last year for the first time. This is uh, from our keynote last year. And uh, last year, we talked a lot about replatforming. Um, some of you guys may know this guy. This is Bill Scott, uh, who famously brought uh, Node to PayPal, or PayPal to Node. Um, and we talked about our intention to do a bunch of open source. And we, if you come to our booth, we will uh, help you get to this page, which is some of the stuff that we open sourced in the last year. But when I went to PayPal, I said to them, I will help you fix your open source and make sure that you get good impact, but there's something else I want to do for you, and I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> but it'll be interesting, I promise. And, uh, and so um, now I know, and it's InterSource. How many of you have heard this topic, this term before? Clap if you've heard it. A little bit, right? So I learned recently that Tim O'Reilly actually coined this term in 2001. And, um, you know, so it, it's, it's all in the family. This is the uh, cocktail napkin drawing that I use when I explain InterSource inside of PayPal. And what's important is that little kind of pale yellow triangle. That's the code mentorship triangle. So um, there are a lot of companies where they've specialized and gotten very good. There are teams that know everything there is to know about a piece of code, but they don't know very much about the rest of the code that's produced in the company. And if you have to get a change you know, instituted across company lines or across project lines, you really have trouble. But um, what I'm saying is, what if we worked like Apache does? What if we used the tools that were developed over, you know, a couple of decades to make a lot of engineers really successful at Apache inside our own company? And um, this is the slide I always use when I'm describing Apache because really I think the Apache Software Foundation is fundamentally a watering hole for angry dinosaurs, right? <laughs> Um, I've been a member for a long time, and I think we've done some amazing work there. But if you have, you know, if you have a lot of animals of different size that need to drink from the same watering hole, I think the Apache way is actually a pretty good way. Um, so why is InterSource interesting now? Like most open source activists, I've been batting away InterSource projects for, you know, most of my career because what felt important was pushing more public code. Let's get more code out there in the public. And PayPal does that. They've got plenty of public code now and, and very interesting hygiene around that. But when I really look at the inside of the company, what I see is what I have been seeing in my practice lately. People who automatically can get good at open source without help um, are, are diminishing. We know all the companies that are going to figure this out sort of under their own steam are pretty much here now. And that's why OSCON keeps getting bigger. But guess what? Open source has a long tail. And that tail, I think, is InterSource. Because if we are serious about open source everywhere, and I mean everywhere, then we have to address the cultures that don't support it because they don't believe in sharing, they don't believe in meritocracy, they have other measures of what success looks like, or they've been at things a long time and, and there are better ways to do things. So to me, InterSource really is going to be much more and more important in the open source world. So, if you're in a company that has siloed engineering, and I know some of you do, pretty much anybody that's older than Google <laughs> has this, right? Because specialization at some point in your history is a good idea. Or if you are moving too fast to get documentation done, which is really common for internal code, as we all know. Um, or if you have quality issues, and this is the SpaceX rocket that crashed. Um, <laughs> InterSource might actually be an answer for you if you have engineers that feel like they're kind of stuck in a rut and, and you want to retain them and you want you know, them to continue to be enthusiastic. Um, we, we are finding that InterSource is pretty interesting. We're at the beginning of what we think is going to be a pretty long journey because unlike open source, InterSource is not well charted. But it's one thing to say it's Apache inside. But what does that actually mean? What steps do you take to change an extant culture in this direction? So we're using it as a catalyst for change within our company, um, cultural change at the engineering level, um, because we want more craftsmanship. We want to up the craftsmanship generally on the code that we produce. Um, we want more mentorship. We want it to be the onboarding experience to be engineer to engineer. Uh, and we also um, want velocity. So we don't want to sacrifice that. 
but we want all these other things. We really are finding that InnerSource is getting us there. So today we're announcing this booklet, Getting Started with InnerSource, which O'Reilly and we have produced. They came and interviewed us about where we're at in the journey. It's, um, it's not very long. It's 25 pages. Easy read. Um, and you can get it, but you don't have to write that URL down because I'm going to tell you another way to get it. We're also announcing InnerSourceCommons.org. This is a website that we've put up. You can hit it now, and it's got a link to how to get that book and a little bit of instruction about how to ask questions and start discussions. We have an IRC channel and some other stuff. We're building tools for our own use with the intention of open sourcing them um, to immediately make them available to everybody else, and we're building them to be extensible so that the community of people that are interested in InterSource can grow together. One of the interesting things PayPal did when they hired me was they let me keep my consultancy open. So people talk to me all the time about, you know, engaging me to help them learn how to do things. Lately, all the conversations I have are really about InterSource. So my answer generally to people who want me to teach them that is come to InterSource Commons and we're going to teach each other how to do it. Because the things that are going to work at PayPal will work in some cultures and in others there might be other dials that need to be turned. This is about everybody sharing and all the boats rising. So please come to InnerSourceCommons.org and join that conversation. And um, now I have a little video for you uh, with some information from some of the people that um, have been doing InnerSource inside of our company. InnerSource at PayPal is taking the best approaches that open source software development communities use to collaborate effectively around the world and applying them to the engineering we do here at PayPal. You know, at the end of the day, InnerSource is just Apache inside your company. You run your company engineering or, or parts of it as though they're really part of the Apache Software Foundation. I'd say InnerSource is the art of bringing open source culture into a company, uh, trying to get the attention of the engineers to see the value of open source culture and what it can foster, what it can promote, how it can help engineers take, the, take pride in their job and also share that pride with everybody else in the teams. Developers want to do their job, and their job is to create great software, to, to create great product, and to help their companies win. And when they, when they start hunting for stuff, when they start searching for where the real code is, when they start having to under, you know, go on, on you know, Himalayan treks to, to you know, find truth when the truth should be right in front of them, you know, it, it's just, it becomes a morale killer. I would say what was surprising was, was really just that it was happening at all because before we started uh, practicing intersource, uh, PayPal really felt uh, old and stodgy from a technology perspective uh, in terms of the tools that we were using and the practices that we were using. Um, so it was really just surprising that, that it was happening at all. One way to think about the quality of software is to think about the idea of publication quality, that the code has to be good enough that you could put it inside of a book and, and have it reviewed and, and be readable and understandable that all of the things that code would have to do in order to work in that context should happen to all of our code even if we're not planning to publish it. And ultimately anything which is going to be open will be published and it turns out we're constantly publishing code for ourselves within the organization. And so if we write everything with the expectation that it's going to be read and understood, then the quality of everything we do is going to get higher and the ability for us to work with our own code base is significantly improved. I'm doing things that I, I wouldn't have thought I was ever really capable of doing and it's, it's mostly because of who I'm collaborating with and how I'm collaborating with them. Uh, I'm able to learn from, from really some, some outstanding engineers and uh, part of it is, is the fact that they work here but the, the other part of it is how they work here and that's by you know, following this inner source model and using you know, the tools that, that, that are used in open source. You know, it's tough work but I think in, as you start seeing a couple of successes and, and you get passionate people in front of both from a grassroots and from an executive point of view, and you get advocates around the company, it's, it starts happening, and there becomes a tipping point, and, and it gets exciting. There you go. So one more slide to remind you again. Go get Getting Started with InterSource from InterSourceCommons.org. Start having conversations and questions. If you want to talk to most of the people in that video are actually in our booth. So if you want to come and talk about InterSource, if your company is also on this journey and you want you know, to know who else is and share some stories, this is a good place to come. 
Um, I also want to call out that uh, Doug Crockford, of course, works for PayPal, and uh, there's some um, people doing a session this afternoon, late this afternoon, on uh, his research into browser hardening, and we wanted to be sure and highlight that because they're first-time speakers. So if you want to, you know, come and, and support some kids, this would be a good idea. Now, I'd like to bring on stage... Um, Arnold Goldberg, uh, who is the VP you saw, um, huge advocate for this when it wasn't so popular, and um, with a lot of vision, and Manish Jain, who uh, is the guy who put our continuous integration together, and um, so we're just going to have a really quick conversation. First of all, thank you so much for making the journey, and um, so tell me, Arnold, you know, what do you think they need to hear about how to get this to happen? So what I thought I would do is... is for each of you that work at a company, I thought I'd, I'd share th three quick before and after scenarios to see where you are in your inner source journey. So the first one is, if you've ever been in a situation where you have a customer experience that's gone bad, an engineer or maybe yourself have found the bug fix, and you tried to get the bug fix put into the, the code stream, but you realize you don't own it. You email the team that owns it, they don't respond. You, of course, set up a meeting to talk to them, they don't show up. So you know, weeks go by. Uh, that's before. After is you do a pull request to that, that piece of code. It gets accepted that day. It goes out. Customers are, are happy everywhere. That's the first scenario. And think about where you are in that journey. The second one is if you actually think about the type of dependencies that, that are needed to actually do something, um, when you actually have an interesting, innovative idea to get the team to actually do that other work for you, they come back and say, hey, it's going to be a quarter before we can get to that. Everything stalls. Conversations ensue. Everything slows down. In the after scenario, imagine what you do is you have a quick conversation via a GitHub issue. You actually do a pull request. The code gets in. The innovative product actually gets out through the door on time. And, and what I will say is in, in both of those scenarios, there's, a, there's a, a, a continuum that you have to get to as a company. So what's, what's really exciting at PayPal, and I'll, I'll turn it over to Manish right now, what's really exciting at PayPal is just we've seen such a sea change of the type of behavior through and through at scale. It's easy to make this kind of change you know, at, within a team, but when you start talking about you know, many, many teams having to collaborate to, to build really innovative things, it's, it's that cultural change that Denise is talking about that once you see it happening, the developers get really, really excited. But what's even more important, the company really starts innovating much faster. And so you know, we're seeing that at PayPal. And really the, the point of us being up here and talking about this today is to, to really collaborate with the, the, the other companies here that, that want to see that change happen within the, their walls as well. So I'll turn it over to Manish. Yeah, so Manish, you, um, you, continuous integration is almost a precursor to making yes. this work. So talk a little bit about that. Yes, so uh, I think that, uh, you know, uh, you know, when we did CI, the first thing we did that we organized all our code so that the developer can find any part of the code in less than a minute. The second thing that we did that we asked everyone to do to just do pull request. Last year, 9% of our, all of our code came via pull request. This year, it's 70%. By end of the year, hopefully, it's 90%. More importantly, we fire builds on every pull request, which gives a lot of confidence both to the contributor and to the committer that this code is not going to blow up in production. So that kind of trust needs to be generated, and CI is the fundamental requirements for this kind of trust to be set up in the company. So will you, will you write up a recipe for me for InterSource Commons about how you did that? So yes, so you know we had our own experience. This is a change management process, and we can share our ideas of what to do and how not to approach it. And mm -hmm. happy to share on, you know, uh, commons. Thank you so. very much. So I hope you guys will come and, and join that conversation. Honestly, um, you know, I've been at this a long time. I really think this is where we're going, and um, and I think it's something that by this time next year we'll all be talking about. Um, we're not the only company doing it or talking about it, but um, we thought we'd share it with you now. And so come on and have a chat with us at the booth. And uh, thank you very much.